And what is the supply function? So we saw this mathematical relationship for demand. We're going to do the same for supply. So this is the function for supply. The quantity of x supply equals, now we'll use betas just to have a differentiation. So beta with uh, sub zero, which is the constant, plus the factors for the price of x, w, which is a price of an input like wages, pr, which is a price of a technology related good, and then h with some other variable. Again, very similar to a demand curve in this kind of abstract form. And when we look at the signs and the magnitude of the betas, similar to what we saw in the signs and magnitude of alphas, it's relevant for supply function as well. So for example, if we're looking at the price of X, the law of supply holds that if the price of X goes up, then the quantity go, would go up. So the normal sign of this factor, beta of X is a positive sign. That would mean it's the law of supply. Next is uh, for W, which is one of the input prices. We see that if input goes up, then we would expect the quantity to go down, right? That would be normal, and that's what we see. So if we increase the price of W, the quantity would decrease for the supply at a given number because our cost just went up. And next is the other factor, which is B sub R, which is for P, and this is Technology may lower the cost of production such that if we have increasing production, we will have decreasing quantity because our quantity was reduced. So as a beta goes up, that would increase the quantity that we sell. Here's an exercise on the linear supply function. And again, this function comes from outside. Here it's a research department and we're given this supply function for television sets. So the question is, how many televisions will we sell if we know the price, the related good, and the input item? So we'll go back to Excel. So here we go back to Excel and see the supply function. This is quite a simple one. And it, we just have to input the variables. So it equals 2,000 plus 3 times PX, which is 400, minus 4 times PR, which is 100, minus one times uh, PW, which is 2000. And the result is 800. And that is the number of television sets. So the result we have 800 television sets and notice the, the factors or the betas, which means that as the price rises for X, we're gonna make more. The negative sign here shows that as technology increases, we are actually going to have a reduction in, in quantity. And here a negative shows that as wages or other inputs go up, we have a reduction in quantity. So again, the sign and the magnitude are important factors in a linear supply function. The next thing we'll do is derive the supply function. We have a generic function for the supply, which is Q of X for supply. Next, we have certain assumptions we'll make about the other factors other than price so that we simplify it to an expression such as this. The quantity of X that's supplied is a function of only one variable, and that's the price of X. Then we solve for the price of X because this is the form that we can graph. Price is the vertical axis, Q is the horizontal axis. So note that it's upward sloping. We know that because the slope is a positive one third, but still it's a positive number, which means it's rising. Producer surplus is defined as the amount that producers receive in excess of the amounts necessary to induce them to produce the goods. Well, that sounds like a mouthful. What does that mean? It means that there was a certain amount that the producers would have taken. And if we pay them more than that, that's their surplus, right? That's the producer surplus. We'll first look at the producer surplus in action here. And that is if we bought one unit at a time and each one was at a slightly higher price, then the producer would capture this entire triangle because they'd sell one at a time at the price that person is willing to buy, right? This is not a very uh, reasonable event that happens. More likely is the following, that there is a set price, here it's $400, and everybody gets it at that price. So some people were maybe willing to pay a higher price, but that doesn't matter. They're all gonna get the same price. So this is the total revenue that's available to the producer, 
times 800 units, which is $320,000. That's total revenue. Next, we'll look at the amount of their surplus. Their surplus represents the amount that they would have gotten um, if they had captured all the value and the extra. So the extra is this dark blue representing the amount over this kind of theoretical number of what they would have sold if they sold one at a time. So this is producer surplus, how much extra they got compared to the, what they would have accepted if they just sold one at a time. 